Welcome to my face. Today I'd like to cover some economic warfare, which is almost a subset of psychological warfare because you need psychological warfare to help make it work. And this isn't something new. This is something that's been around for a long time. They've always manipulated currencies. Uh, they always tried to benefit the ruling class and keep the... Um, worker class in its place, in its economic place, in its social place. Um, that's why, you know, they don't like groups of people getting together because there's power in that. There's influence. That's why they like to keep everyone divided on everything. There's no power in the individual. So, economic warfare has been used probably perfected now because I mean they just have AI running a lot of the technical aspects of the trading on the stock markets and everything like that to game the system basically legally remember these big corporations have infiltrated our government many times over for years and years decades this isn't a Trump problem for you Trump want to point your finger at him for everything. Remember, he just got there. He's exposing it. You get to see it. You'd never see it if it wasn't for him. Most of you. So, they want to keep the slave class basically in its place. And they'll pluck and pick and choose those that stand out. They'll either hammer them down or they'll recruit them. Remember the best way to defeat your enemy is to lead them. You always wonder why when you vote for somebody you're voting for that person, you're voting for their agenda or what they say they're gonna do. Isn't that a little ass backwards? That representative means that he represents the interest of the people in his district you guys got together and said hey we we can't all go let's just send one person you don't send one person because you like his ideas you send him because he is your voice collectively he is your voice he's not his own voice he's a servant not a leader okay that's what you need to send someone that's going to reiterate your interests and that's not what happens. People got it in their mind through psychological warfare over many years that it's just the opposite. That you're voting for a leader. No, in a representative of government, you're voting for a servant. Get that right, and you'll start to see things a little bit differently about how things work. Now, as far as economic warfare... Um, governments have always tried to keep an eye on their people know what they're doing these corporations want to know everything that you're doing because they can use it in their sales strategy or their next product or whatever they want information information that should be private to you but you're giving it to them and you're helping them become more powerful by giving in to whims and fads and everything like that you're supplying these people you know, when people complain all oh, these rich corporations well you made them rich you bought their products you didn't have to you agreed to the price and you did it willfully under your own free will nobody put a gun to your head it was all you and millions of other people the power of propaganda, power of suggestion, the power of music. Remember, I covered all these things in my other videos, emotional warfare. And that plays a lot into how their propaganda works. They play on your emotions. As far as economic warfare, they know how much the average person makes. They do. I mean, it's statistical. You know, they can look it up. They track these things. How much does the average person make, you know? 
they know how much everything costs because these are the corporations that own the corporations or buddies with the corporations or partnered with them or in some sort of a line with them uh, whether it's logistics or supply at one point or another there's a lot of different corporations involved in this and a lot of them kind of tend to come and meet at the top and they're together they're basically a parent company with a bunch of other little sub lit corporations big well-known names you know like Chili's is owned by some Briggs Brig, Brinkman Brigman company for, out in Europe it was an American company and they moved to Europe but the parent company you know you, you can look it up online see who these uh, parent companies are and what they stand for because they like to brag about their uh, ideologies on their web pages so you can go and look for yourself and see what they stand for and a lot of these multinational corporations they're all over the world they have put you know their businesses all over the world from these little sub well-known names they have been advertised I don't know how many times and you see them everywhere you notice those are usually the only ones open in the COVID-19. So the stimulus check that you're getting from the government has just been laundered through you and into their hands. See how that worked? They got mom and pop and small businesses are shut down. But Lowe's and these big corporations are, are allowed to be open. Yeah. How'd they do that? you let them do that you let you think you elect someone and you let the leash off and say all right man good luck you don't talk to them you don't send letters you don't do anything you don't help give them the guiding hand of the people he's supposed to be listening to he's not supposed to be listening to these corporations he's supposed to be listening to you what else we got here uh they know how much everything costs. I mean, they set the prices. They follow the line from the very beginning of the raw materials. And bring it all up the line. And that's what's going to get you your final retail cost. When everybody's fingers in the pie gets a piece. The more people with their fingers in their pie, you know, like brokers and everything like that. Why do you think stuff costs so much? You got everyone and their mother sticking their fingers in the pie. <coughs> so, and that drives the cost up. You have policies that drive costs up. You have taxations that drive the costs up. You have demand versus supply which can can have an effect on the costs <coughs> excuse me There's a dry spot and then you have their greed now they're always looking to you know up that bottom line i mean that's what any business would do the difference between them and regular Joe is since they've had, you know, got the money to put anyone they want in the office and run for office and do their bidding instead of yours, they have the money to and the power to change laws that favor them over you. Remember that. The goal of any business is to increase its profit. And some of these companies and billionaires, billionaires, yeah, these corporations that you hate so much if you're on the left, but don't realize it's the left running these corporations. And you, you act like it's your political enemies are all up to it, or some faceless entities out there. No. Look at their portfolios. Come on. Look at De Blasio. He bragged that all his businesses are in China. And he's the mayor of a major American city? 
doing policy for them. Who do you, who, who's he working for? And he's a billionaire. You know, they can bypass the American worker. The American worker is expensive because of the cost of living. And we'll get into that in a minute. The cost of living just they they control the whole cost of living put it that way what was it ford that wanted to make sure that his workers could afford the cars they were building and it worked out what happened now you need a loan that you pay for the next 10 20 years of your life just to get a car when you know 40 50 years ago 60 years ago you could buy one, you know, real cheap. You didn't have to go get a loan. Or even houses. You're not even supposed to have property taxes. That's paying rent to the government. They keep finding new ways to justify getting everything from you eventually. That's their goal. So that you have nothing except for what they allow you to have. If you understand that goal, you'll see everything else fit right in line as it goes. And you'll understand what they're doing when you know their goal and why they're doing certain things. When a lot of people think it's just grassroots or happenstance or a coincidence or eh, maybe it just sounds like a good idea. No, they, it's, it's planned. Okay, it's planned. They have think tanks that go through all this stuff and everything before it even gets to the politician okay it's all carefully thought of the names of stuff are thought of psychological psychological warfare that they pull on you our own government is pulling psychological warfare on us to get what they want and they want you to have nothing except for what they give you as long as you're compliant all right, other things here. Since they know how much everything costs, they know your shopping habits. You know, they can look up your financial statements. You know, all this stuff is sold all back and forth to all corporations and everything, and you don't get a piece of the sale. Isn't that something? That works out just great for them. And you're blind to it. You don't see these things. You see the world falling apart around you, and you're like, why? <coughs> <coughs> you got to actually look at some of the things that are happening, not looking, you know, just close your eyes and hope it goes away. It's not going to. They want everything. They want you. They want you to be their slave. That's what they want. In the end, slavery is is the incomplete obedience. They want to be gods. That's what they want. They think they're gods, and they want to play God. All right. So since they know how much you make, basically, they also know the amount of people and their demographics and geographical areas. Okay, so they know who's all in Detroit, what kind of workers and businesses are in there. All that information is available to find out. And they have people that analyze this information for investments and everything like that. And if they're into, since they're in the social engineering, and now that the cat's out of the bag on that, that they are definitely in the social engineering and they want to uh, join or create a culture war just conjure one up that they've been feeding for a long time remember this isn't a Trump thing these people a lot of them have been in this business in this government for 40 50 years those are the people that have been building this all this time against you to you to them you are cattle you are farm animals they do not give a shit about you. They just need the illusion of consent. Majority consent. The illusion of majority consent. And since we have a 
democracy, quote unquote, they have to use propaganda to get you to go along because if the mask slipped off their faces, you would see them for what they truly are and what they're truly trying to do. So there's more of us than there are of them, and they know this. So they're going to try their damnedest just to make themselves look like, oh, we care about the people, we're doing this for you. No, if you trace everything that's been going on, it comes right to these people that have been there for a long time. They are the swamp. They are the ones that have fucked up our country over a period of time, boiling the frog as not to be noticed, but it was subtle. But now they're actively and openly showing their face and they will do anything if you know you have a bunch of unruly farm animals and you're the farmer and you just can't deal with them and you don't need them all what do you do you either sell them off or you call them because you don't need them all and they're more of a headache than they're worth they see themselves as the farmers okay they shopping and everything like that they know you know they got your financial information so they can literally gear up a geographical area and control the average economy across all the demographics they can create inequality just by doing that and controllers thrive on division so they need to keep you divided and giving each other the hairy eyeball so the the deeper the division the better the control and the harder it is for this group of people to back down and start to think with their heads instead of their emotions they don't want that they're going to keep one segment of the population down I mean look at Detroit what happened to all those car factories that was, that was like one of the boomingest cities in the world <coughs> they knew what they were doing they knew exactly what they were doing certain demographic of people start moving in and multiplying and everything like that they move their businesses. Remember, the American worker is expensive. You got health care, you got insurance, you got worker safety, uh, retirement plans, infrastructure, standards of living to keep up with, cost of living to keep up with. Hell, you just go to China and get slave labor. You just probably cut out 90% of your cost. Because all business owners know the majority of the cost is usually labor. That's right. People. So they bypass the American people. That's why back in the 90s, people were pissed off about the trade deals because now all of our companies swoosh right out of the country over to China, Mexico, all over the world and our unemployment skyrocketed so who was the cause of a lot of the problems? It wasn't Trump, he just got here You're just following the media because the media is part of that group of corporations that are trying to fool you into keeping them in power so they can keep doing what they're doing. Psychological warfare. They can create winners and losers. They can decide, you know, which companies are going to fare well and which companies are not. And if you're not politically connected, 
or rubbing the right so shoulders or rubbing the right palms you're you're not gonna get it I know the government contracts used to be bid bidded contracts you had to bid on stuff now they all the time they're doing no bid con tracks with companies that they favor over others how is that not corruption so one of these companies uh, donates to a campaign and boy they sure get what they want but see they're not getting it in a vacuum it's being taken away from you they have to get it somewhere the government doesn't produce anything it has to get this influence and power from somewhere and all its powers are listed in the Constitution so they create new powers but the only way they get that power is convincing you to give it to them which means you've taken it from yourself and given it to them remember the Tenth Amendment you have uh, all powers not enumerated, you know, there go to the states, not the federal government. If it's not listed for the federal government, it goes to the states or to the people. But they got you convinced to give up more power to this government but you see you don't understand you're not just giving them power you're taking it away from yourself and that's my point on that you have the power why are you giving it up they, they got you tricked into thinking it's not your power and you shouldn't wield it only trained government officials can wield that sort of power you're too stupid see because you're a farm animal <laughs> It's that simple. They also understand culture and counterculture. How that works and they use it to their advantages to sell stuff. They don't care really. Uh, they're going to lean towards a culture that's going to benefit them the most. And they'll you know use that to sell their products and would they study culture and trends and, and fads and everything why do you think they get so rich they put products out there that coincide with whatever's going on that time culturally to help it along if it's beneficial or to stomp it out if it's not they're playing social engineers they're helping and encouraging culture and counterculture and counterculture and culture, if it gets out of hand, will turn into a civil war because now you have two opposing cultures that can't agree. And one saying, my way is better, and the other one saying, my way is better. And then you have leaders in the government saying, I'm going to do this for us, but they're only doing it for that culture, see? and the other side as well and they'll never agree nothing gets done it gets gridlocked because now it's seeped into the government instead of dealing with it as a whole and embracing the culture which made our country that's the one that should stay that's how what identifies our country is that culture if you take that away and you replace it with the counterculture that's prevalent right now, then you've turned it into the rest of the world. And that's what our founders tried to avoid, was being a unique country away from the rest of the world so it wouldn't get embroiled in its economic wars and its wars of real war, you know, and all that stuff like that, religion and stuff. I'll probably cover religion in another video the destruction of savings over time you know we used to have savings we used to be able to have savings but they got everything they know you need a car they know you need a place to live and they know you need to eat 
and then they also know that generally you need stuff to get around you know fuel and uh, classes and you know registrations and insurance and they know all the costs involved the general average costs of the general population so if they know how much everything costs and they also know how much average Joe makes then they can totally manipulate everything they can they want to keep you right behind the eight ball because a slave that's behind is going to work harder than the slave that's ahead because there's a beating at the end of it if he doesn't see they don't want you to have savings money is power money is influence money is choices choices they want to make all your choices how do they do that remove yours and then they come in with strings attached here's your choices and usually they're not choices they're ultimatums it's like either do this or go to prison that's not a choice that's an ultimatum so remember power is the goal the less you have of it and the more you give up of it the more powerful they are and these are the corporations that want a world government with them as a conglomerate to be in charge no countries no higher power no God that's right I'll cover that in the religion one Let's see. Besides the, they want to make you reliant. So you know everyone needs a loan for everything, because everything you know certain things that you they know you need and need to get, and they get you convinced through their commercials and media and social media and everything to spend that money, spend, spend, spend. Go to this concert, buy this furniture, buy these name brands that are no different than a generic brand. They just have someone's name on it. You're just spending the money. They don't want you to have savings. <coughs> we used to have savings. Now most people live paycheck to paycheck because their money is in one hand and straight out the other with just bills alone taxes they'll use taxes you know they can offset stuff I mean what was it in New York when they raised the cigarette uh, tax well they said uh, it's we did this to deter smoking so you make something more expensive to try and get people to stop doing it explain to me again what income taxes is that to deter you from having an income you can't have it both ways they just knew that a lot of people weren't gonna quit and they just get an extra money and they're getting see they can print up all the money that they want and a lot of people don't understand this they just do a loan sign the check and we're on the hook for it we're the collateral our time, our labor, our numbers. That's the collateral. The land. That's the collateral. What else does the government have? Government thinks it owns us as farm animals. They put us up for collateral to make these loans, our labor. If they can print up all the money that they want, they don't need your money. See? trillions of dollars they just don't want you to have as much that's why it's not because they need your money they just want you to have less of it 
And it's just going to dwindle down like a boiling frog. Dwindle down slowly and before you know it, you've got nothing. Just like our founders warned us about. Let's see what else. Minimum or progressive raises for cost of living. Now, people are aggravated with Trump or something like that, trying to blame him, okay? When was the last time it was raised? Alright, so keep Trump out of it. I mean, Jesus. Just stop it. It's not all Trump's fault. It's the people you're following. Fuck. Can you be any more unclear and stupid? These people have been doing this for a long time. And now because their their media that they control have you convinced that oh it's it's the orange man's fault. Yeah, you just fucking got here. Jeez. Wake the hell up. They've been doing this for a long time. Before you were born. It started. You come onto the scene, you get born into this world, and all of a sudden you know what's going on because the people were telling you is doing this shit. You're listening to them through their media. Their media, them, they own it. Hello? These corporations you hate so much because they're evil and everything like that, they're the ones that are in cahoots with this media. It's their tool to sell you, to, to, for, to get you to keep them nice and rich. They didn't get rich magically. They didn't get rich magically. And you can't go and say, well, we think you made too much money. Because what are you going to do, rob them? Take some of your money back? You already agreed to the price when you purchased it and gave them your money. You voluntarily agreed to that price. You can't ask for your money back and then expect to keep the product or service you purchased. <laughs> People that want free stuff, they don't realize who's going to make the free stuff. Who's going to work for free so that you have it for free? That's slavery. Shit costs money. Learn about business for fuck's sake. Call us stupid. Let's see. 9-11. Go shopping. That was the premier message of our government. That was the answer. Go shopping. Spend that money. You notice when a Walmart comes into to town, they have such low prices and great service to put the other local businesses under because they can't keep up with it. Because these guys are getting rubbed from the government and they're getting rubbed from China. And everything's cheaper. And then as soon as most of their competition is gone, they raise the prices back up secretly. They also raise prices in a different way as well. And this goes into their manufacturers and stuff like that. They will put less material, less food in a box, but the box will stay the same. Because nobody reads a little small print how much weight, like a box of cereal, you know how many ounces it is and then uh, the next week it's the same size box so you don't think about it you just go and grab it like you usually do but there's like 20 percent less in the box and it costs the same so you don't notice that the price actually went up the amount they put in the same size package changes yeah. 
you're getting robbed and tricked and manipulated and played every single day by these corporations with their commercials and everything yeah eat our cereal it'll make you happy and they show a bunch of happy kids playing around with some cartoon character that's probably a pedophile well because they sell it to the kids and the kids bug you to get it that's why they play these commercials during cartoons and everything like that because they know kids are watching and get you to buy their useless fucking shit how do you think they got rich <laughs> and so powerful do you have the money to spread your ideology by funding several candidates and several elections across the country for state local and federal uh, positions no you probably don't have enough money to run yourself that's the idea these corporations do they get to stick these people in all the parties all over the country they have plenty of money that you gave them they're taking your money and buying your you know owning basically come out of their own pocket these politicians that's why be careful where you shop you are literally funding the people trying to destroy you and for the counterculture warriors that think they're doing a good thing you're destroying our country for them that's what you're doing they don't care about your culture they're using it and using you to achieve their goal of a borderless world with no countries and them these rich corporations that you hate so much are gonna be the ones in charge and these are the ones that back in the 90s went to the UN and asked if they were allowed to own people from cradle to grave they'll take care of you but you're their property yeah they don't care about human life they care about control power which you know money provides a lot of that sooner or later money won't be a factor and it'll just be raw power okay because they're gonna do away with the money and it's just gonna be raw power if you don't do what you're told they don't need you <laughs> think they need you what are you good at are you an asset to anyone ask yourself that are you an asset to anyone are you worth keeping around above a doctor or engineer or you know someone who works real hard has good work ethic and everything like that you think you measure up or do you think you'll be in the ditch with the rest of them that are just useless eaters to them yeah that's what they call you useless eaters watch Aaron Russo his uh, documentary guy died but he put out a documentary from freedom to fascism okay I find it ironic the countercultures anti-fascist and everything they do is fascist in nature I mean that's pretty funny but let's move on we covered the destruction of small businesses you know they, they don't want them they, they want the only ones left standing is gonna be them they're gonna provide it all they're gonna be God they don't want anyone above a certain level they want everyone equal that's why they're con convincing you about equality <laughs> We're not supposed to have equality. You have equal opportunity. All of us were created equal by our creator. But it's what you do after that that sets you apart. But people seem to want to force equality, which will create inequality. <laughs> Think deep on that. Forcing equality will create inequality because you have some that are good at what they do and are frugal and 
will do Excel better at certain things and you have some that don't. So now you're forcing these two to be equal who just got ganked. Well, the, the, the guy that does a good job, he's not going to want to do a good job anymore if he's going to end up with the same uh, outcome as loser boy. Why bother? You're being a slave at that point if you go above any ability that this loser, you know, is capable of. Most failures are due to people not applying themselves. $15 an hour. That would kill small businesses and raise the cost of living. I mean, why do you think... I mean, I'm all for a living wage, but, you know, if you're working at McDonald's as a career, uh, you're a failure. Unless you own the place. Okay? It's not meant to be a career. It's meant to be uh, entry level, you know, young kid getting his first job and stuff like that. Over the summer or something like that. It's not meant to live off of it. It's supposed to teach. And that's what keeps your burgers cheap. $15 an hour in order to keep your burger the same price they'd have to fire everybody and only have one person running around trying to do everything at once how long do you think you'll have to wait for your burger because they would have to raise the price considerably just to cover remember labor is the biggest cost in most businesses there's nowhere else to cut or the, or the business won't operate. Most of these businesses are just barely eking by. And you add a pile of shit like this on there, forcing them to pay a certain much. I mean, you don't have to work there. Don't work there. Why should the government... I mean, is the government going to pay the bills in your business and everything? Are they going to take over all the headaches and take that, all that on? Because they sure want to run your business for you and tell you how to run your business but they don't want any responsibility for when it fails because of those policies see and then you're the one standing there holding the bag because the whole goal was to destroy the small businesses if you only have two employees and you can barely pay them for the time you need them for and now it's fifteen dollars an hour well now you need to fire one of them and do half the work has there anyone ever taken economics class or are you taking bullshit classes from communist china retard math because it's not rocket science you can't keep taking ten marbles out of a pocket that only holds nine marbles. It's dumb. Basic economics. A freaking three year old could figure it out. Fifteen dollars an hour. A lot of other things will have to change. Because, see, now that business is going to have to charge more for its items. And it's going to cost you more to buy them. Which means now your budget just got skewed too. So that $15 an hour that everyone's getting, the, it cancels itself out when the cost of living catches up. Now it's like they never got a raise. They're still behind that eight ball because the cost of living is going to go up. And no doctor or engineer is going to accept a paycheck the same size as someone digging holes on the side of the road. That would be an insult. They earned it. Isn't that why most people go to college? Get a better job? Make more money? But during the process of that, you want everything for free? What's going to happen when you get out of college and want that job that pays six figures? Oh, no, ain't there now. You got to work for free. You, you got to get paid the same amount as the guy flipping burgers at McDonald's is making. And you just wasted all your time in college thinking you're going to get that better job. Well, it's going to be gone. 
It's going to all cancel and even out. People don't think deep into this shit. Let's see. Credit ratings. Legal discrimination, basically. You know, everyone's gotten behind on something at some point in their life. You know, it's just a fact. It, a lot of probability sooner or later. You know, you, you forgot or whatever like that. Or something comes up or there's a tragedy or something. So you didn't pay a bill or something like that or you forgot about it well now you got a ding on your credit it's legal discrimination under the guise of oh you must be bad with money well it's kinda hard to be good with money when you have say five hundred dollars in bills and you only have four hundred dollars a week in pay so you either got to pay these four, or these four, or put a little bit in these two, and then, you know, you're juggling around. So yeah, you're going to get dinged up. Because of the cost of living. And how much you make. Can't all live like kings. This, is, this, this country is about liberty and freedom. Once you start getting into the realm of forcibly picking winners and losers basically you're eliminating the whole reason for this country which was about personal liberty you know you're a man on the land you're your own uh, you're the author of your own life you're the owner of your own body right that's the whole idea. The only one above you is God and who he uh, appoints or whatnot. And that's the way it was intended. Limited government. But you get this counterculture that wants to give everything to the government, thinking that the government's going to do a good job disseminating everything to everyone equally and fairly. Really? <laughs> You think the co everything the government touches turns to shit and ten times as expensive. And then they end up punishing you for it. And they're unrelenting. Government is force. The laws they enforce, they don't enforce them like they're suggestions. They use force. And the threat of force. Why would you want to give them that power? It's dumb. Yeah, let's pick the shittiest people in the world and give them the power that we have and give it to them. We don't need power. Really? Why is everyone working against liberty? There are a lot of people, not everyone, that's for sure. Working against it. And handing it over to the very people you complain about. So, see the power of brainwashing by the media? All forms of media, okay? They all reinforce each other. Don't think that it's just in this area, or it's just Fox News, or it's just MSNBC, or it's just certain movies. No. It's in everything. Remember only a certain amount of people own all the shit that you see on the airwaves. Think they have your best interest at heart? You, personally? You? No. You don't control shit. You're just latching on to something because it's popular. Let's see. Taxes and fees. They sure like to control and keep down. I remember when we owned a store. It's just the fees and taxes and everything like that. They were crushing. Regulations, inspections. I mean, it's like they work very hard at making sure that any kind of profit that you made goes to them. So you're working, breaking even. You're just treading water. You're not getting anywhere. In fact, sometimes you're going backwards. It's stressful. 
but you're not a big corporation where you're getting you know billions of dollars so you can't absorb any of it it's sink or swim should you be forced to give my store money because no one wants to shop there because maybe they don't like what I'm selling or they don't like me or whatever and and I'm going out of business because no one's buying my shit so what do I do I go to my buddies in the government and I say hey people aren't buying my stuff make them buy my stuff and then the government either comes out with a law mandating that you have to buy a service or an object like a license plate you know use that as an example or a service like insurance forcing you mandating you telling you have to buy from this company or that company over here that's not liberty it's tyranny and that's the problem everyone thinks that they can mandate everything in a free country you're, you're turning it unfree going in the exact opposite direction inflation that's a hidden tax you know that's why a lot of people don't have savings if they have savings back from the 1950s it's only worth maybe half of that or a quarter of that by the time you retire and now you still have to work because your savings didn't cover it and your savings were getting eaten up a little bit here and there along the way they keep everything in such a way to always have you rushing scrambling making every minute of the day count planned obsolescence always having to buy new shit that's how you know the light bulb conspiracy you know light bulbs used to last a long time I remember now they won't last a month the incandescence that's the best lighting to have but now they won't last a month because they do the filaments in such a way that they have a lifespan that only lasts the average amount of time they even say it right on the box how long they last <laughs> <coughs> they used to last a lot longer but they need you know around the great depression they need to create jobs well if you could buy a light bulb that can last 50 60 years well that's no good because now you're not out buying light bulbs every other month so they get you buying light bulbs and what else have they done it with well they've done it with cars what, what do you think car companies they make most of their money on parts if you're not buying parts because their parts were meant, built to last forever or for a very long time they wouldn't make any money they'd have to do either do something else in the meantime or fold up camp So they make shit break down purposely. They sabotage the things you're, they're selling you on purpose. You know, it's like once you go buy a new tire and then you get halfway down the road, you run over a nail that they put there. Now you got to go back there and buy a new tire. See, that's how it works. And that, But doing it that way is illegal. But doing it the way they're doing it all of a sudden is legal, right? Sabotaging your product making it only last so long and then lying to your face about oh this is the greatest thing ever new and improved yeah new and improved my ass if we took all the new and improved and the plus 10 percent cleaning power or whatever like that over all the years and applied it to just one thing that shit should eat right through my desk it's so powerful now it's just the same shit does the same shit it did when they first come out with it doesn't do anything different doesn't do anything better bullshit it's just new and improved hey let's that make it red now oh new and improved yeah new and improved color okay you now maybe some things do improve a little bit I, I'll, I'll give it that I'm not saying you know this is all in a black and white abstract so. uh, let's see money equals choices sound money equals value the shit you buy how much value do you think it has 
you look at antiques and stuff they've held their value why because a lot of them are unique handmade or not many of them were made but or even made a certain way or they're done by a certain person who got it right and it's valuable it's, it adds, has value and they lasted this long and they're gonna last even longer they lasted forever yeah we can't have that but those things have actual value blood sweat and tears into it now most shit is made of plastic and made from a computer program designed on a computer translated into uh, a manufacturing line and they just pump out you know millions of them then they advertise you to death to buy them or your kids or some other way of getting you to buy them but going back to the store thing if would it be right since no one wants to shop at my store that I go to the government and force you to give me money anyway that's what a bailout is it's like I'm going out of business because I don't have enough customers so we're gonna punish everyone else and make sure that they are a customer whether they like it or not you are now forced to be a customer of me and you don't even get the product or service if you want it you still have to come in and buy it again off of me that's what a bailout is you're buying something and not receiving the product because the government said so because they prefer that business to stay afloat but you in your small business oh fuck you you know it's your fault, your own damn fault. Oh, no, uh, they make it they make it impossible to follow their stupid edicts on purpose. These big corporations, they can do it. They can absorb stupidity and and idiotic things like that because they're so big. And you keep them afloat. <sighs> they're just farming you for wealth. Let's see, who runs things in the government? Corporations do. And these parties are basically just subsidiaries of group of corporations working together. Well, you can say it's one party to the other. No, both parties don't serve you. They serve their party, which serves their masters, which aren't you. It's a global thing. It's almost like they have their own secret government somewhere else. And our government is just a show. It's just a show. Because the real things happen behind the throne. Let's see. Using lawfare to achieve supremacy. They also do that. Uh, my short video on lawfare explain a few things about it they'll sue you or whatever they'll uh, let's see Monsanto here's an example Monsanto up in Canada uh, one of their trucks drove by a regular farmers field and some of the seeds fell out of the truck and started growing on his land and they came and sued him and won said he stole their formula he was growing their their genetically modified patented seed without permission what did they do they probably ended up buying that land put you out of business put the competition out of business using lies smears and everything like that they'll spread rumors oh these guy, this guy shoves hot dogs up his ass before he sh serves them to you you know about their competition so then and if they keep it up I mean look at what they do to Trump it's a classic example it's all day every day constant smear nothing's proven because they keep moving along and once you realize it's not proven you get ten other things in front of it that you need to pay attention to because they're bigger <laughs> you know it's all about putting a cloud over them uh, let's see other countries and currency wars you know because they're always trying to devalue their currency in such a way where they have an advantage over your country it's 
what these tariffs and everything were about mostly is uh, balancing out the field in fact you know they people complain oh Trump put tariffs on them it's unfair bullshit it ain't fair it's not even as harsh as what they're still doing to us okay so shut the fuck up already about it you have no idea what you're talking about if you're against these tariffs just shut the fuck up that's all there is to it dumb just partisan politics because the team you support said it's a bad thing so now you're going around being a fucking parrot stop it stop being a damn parrot look into it there's a freaking reason jeez fucking grow the hell up listen to their friggin media is what it is I mean it's you know it's aggravating it's like talking to a fucking brick wall sometimes with some of these people they don't care as long as their team looks good it's like did you really look into the team you're supporting there buddy are you that mince meat in the head okay what else we got force shopping but no product in return yeah that's like the bailouts it's forcing you to shop at my store because you didn't want to shop there. So I um, might go out of business, so I petition the government to force you to shop there. But I don't have to give you any product in return. That's all it is. You're going to give me money anyway. Let's see. Uh, sabotage. Economic sabotage. Well, they they do it in many ways through the stock market, um, price fixing, mock shortages, to get you to go out and buy stuff, fads, tell you there's a shortage of what was it the um, Cabbage Patch Kid dolls back in the 80s. Oh, there's a shortage. Everyone had to run out and buy them because they were just so valuable. And they'd spend hundreds of dollars on on these things. People s buying a few of them and selling them in parking lots like scalpers. Yeah, and they sure got you to dump a whole shitload of money into their pockets over a frickin' doll. It's no wonder we're not Venezuela yet. I just wonder, how, I mean, how do we make it this far without being Venezuela? With the utter stupidity of following fads and shortages, and they can create shortages like they did with the toilet paper. There was no shortage. People were buying it faster than it normally rolled in on a truck. That's what made it look like there was a shortage, and then the media runs with it. Fear, fear, panic, panic, we're all gonna die. People are getting toilet paper off the shelves. All they have to do is film one person going into a store, filling up their cart with toilet paper, and they've just started the whole thing. The whole thing. So now everyone's going to, oh my God, that guy's going to buy up all the toilet Everyone's going to buy up all the toilet paper. I better get mine now. Yeah, there was no shortage. Go look at the stores now. they got toilet paper in there because they never, you know, they, they meter the trucks in. It's on-demand delivery. It's how often they usually run out is when the trucks run. That way the trucks aren't running constantly, non-stop, all day, every day for that one product. They know on average how long it takes for it to be sold. <laughs> I mean, th this, these are facts. These are facts we learned when we had our own businesses. It's just how it is. But the most important thing is they control the economies. Okay? And for people complaining that, you know, the federal government isn't doing enough of this or that for these people, you know what? It's the responsibility of the damn state. Who's running your freaking state? Who's been running your state for how many years? Yeah. That's the problem. Not Trump. I mean, how... Just people even think yeah I'm directing at you the left 
Do you think? It's like because the, his political opposition says, oh, it's all his fault. No, this is shit that's been going on for a long, long time. And who's been in there all this time? Yeah. Who's running your state, your town, your county for a long, long time? This partisanship bullshit needs to stop. It's dumb. You will go totally against logic and actual evidence just so that your side seems like it's right or not as evil as the other side. Remember, vote for the lesser of two evils. Oh, well, we've done things, but they're not as bad as what they did. Now, shut up. Just shut up. your fucking hands out of your asses the corporations have taken over our country and they're running everything none of the people you voted for are working for you dumbasses they're working for their party and their party is working for the conglomerate of corporations that you freaking hate so much that are working hand in hand with China now for a long time to try and get rid of our country. You're going to use China to destroy our country. Make us. They, they want China to be a superpower, but they're not with China 100%. They're just using them. Just using them. Because they have potential to be used for the ends the mean the, the means justify the ends they don't care if we nuke each other as long as we're both gone see not only trying to start a civil war here they're trying to start world wars they were trying to start one with Russia they were trying to start one with China and whoever else got in the way like Syria and the list goes on okay well, pretty much covered the economic warfare aspect. It gets deeper, but I wanted to give you a generalized idea of how economic warfare works. Remember, they know all the numbers, so they can manipulate them any which way that they want. If you're poor, and your whole neighborhood is poor, there's a reason why it's poor, and it was designed that way. If your neighborhood is rich or doing very well, it was designed that your neighborhood is doing very well and allowed to happen and allowed to thrive. Usually when you take your hands off of something, it grows. If you get your hand around someone's neck, they can't grow. There's a reason why these inner cities were deliberately dumbed down and destroyed. Who's in charge of those cities for decades? Yeah, it's not the federal government, is it? Some of the policies affect them. But who's in direct control? Start freaking putting two and two together. Jeez. Alright, I'm going to let this go now about an hour so I hope this enlightens you to that door opening in the world of economic warfare it is a form of warfare and it has been used and being used all the time so uh, be smart be educated and act accordingly have a good day